Good afternoon. My name is Edward Cato Sanchen Oberholzer. I'm the resident priest here at the Joseph Priestley Zen Sangha in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, deep in the middle of one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world, the Appalachians. We're an affiliate of Enthi Moon Zen. There's a collection of the talks of Katagiri Roshi entitled, You've Got to Say Something. And yes, somehow, in some way, that is what we as practitioners of the Dharma have taken on. We have to say something. One of our grave precepts tells us that we can't spare the Dharma assets. And so I was told when I was first made a Dharma teacher in Boundless Way Zen many years ago that the expectation was to share the Dharma with anyone willing to sit still long enough to hear it. And of course, thankfully, you don't have to be articulate. You aren't asked to be profound. The Dharma is anything but profound or articulate. And, and yet, and yet, it is deeply profound. It is deeply articulate. As profound as Zhao Zhou's oak tree in the garden, as articulate as Yunmen's dried shit stick. It speaks out here in the very presence of each of us in the air, the wind, the clouds, the very electrons carrying this message over the internet. And there the Dharma murmurs, it whispers, it sings and chants. Listen, the vast the wide world around us tells the story of the Dharma. I could simply shut up and let the world come forth and speak for itself, to shout for itself, and it will. I had a religion professor at Boston University who used to say, and, and I had to take into account that he had been at one time a Lutheran minister, a professor who used to compare the Catholic homily with the Lutheran sermon much to the advantage of the Lutherans, of course. As Professor Olson put it, a homily was a tedious, moralizing discourse, while the Lutheran sermon, or Rukundum, could be translated as a proclamation, with very much an exclamation point added to it. And how much this resonates with what we in the Zen world know as a teisho, as a shout, also very much with that voiced exclamation point. And yet none of this really requires words. No, no, just as words themselves can be actions, actions voiced as stop, look out, duck, hear, so actions can be words, can, can substitute for words. Luther nailing his theses to the cathedral door at Wittenberg. That was a shout, a proclamation, whether you read the words there or not. Lin Ji coming down from the high seat, grabbing Elder Ding by the collar and pushing him away. Well worth an entire sermon. Many years ago, there was a film version of a short story by Robert Graves titled The Shout. It told of the effects on a marriage of two characters when they took in a man, played by Alan Bates, who claimed to have lived among Australian Aborigines for decades, decades during which he was taught to shout a shout so intense, so powerful, so devastating that anyone who heard it would die instantly. As you might imagine, things did not go well. But a shout, a teisho that kills, that utterly destroys the ego, the self, now that is a consummation devoutly to be wished. And so we hear, a monk asked Dongshan, when cold and heat visit us, how should we avoid them? Dongshan said, 
Why not go where there is neither cold nor heat? The monk asked, Where is there neither cold nor heat? And Dongshan said, When it is cold, kill yourself with cold. When it is hot, kill yourself with heat. When a shout kills you, turn towards that shout. Let yourself be extinguished. Let your ego die, even if it's just Ellen Bates there on screen. Words, 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 says Hamlet. Words rather than actions, yet even he, in setting out that play within a play, treats those mere words as a hook to catch his uncle. Words that, stripped of their meaning, stand by themselves as acts. John, in his gospel, tells us, En arche in o logos, in the beginning was the word, the logos. The whole universe begins with a word. God moves on the water and utters fiat lux, a word that does not convey simply meaning, a word that transcends meaning, a word that is, that simply is meaningless, meaningful, flavorless, silent, expressive, a voice of thunder in the silence. Just this, just this, let there be light. That simple act, that picture conveyed a thousand words, that picture that holds a thousand actions, that word that speaks volumes, the woman gives us. In case 40 of the Gateless Gate, often entitled Guishan, kicks over the water bottle, he gives us this. When Guishan was with Bai Zhang's assembly, he was the cook of the monastery. Bai Zhang wanted to choose a founding teacher for Mount Dagui. He invited all of his monks to make a presentation, saying, the outstanding one will be sent. Then he took a water bottle and set it on the floor and said, don't call this a water bottle. What would you call it? The head monk said, it can't be called a wooden clog. Bai Zhang then asked Guishan's opinion. Guishan kicked over the water bottle and walked out. Bai Zhang laughed and said, the head monk loses. Guishan thereupon was made the founding teacher at Mount Dagui. Shout that, that kills the ego a shout that kills the self, a shout that gave Mount Gui its founding teacher. I've always loved the way Kazan tells his audience after he's presented a short, a short story and that, that he has a short verse to comment on, on that story. And he always asks, so incredibly politely, do you want to hear it? Well, Wuman left us with a short verse on this koan. Do you want to hear it? Tossing bamboo baskets and ladles away, he swept all impediments before him. Bai Zhang's severe barrier could not interrupt his rush. Thousands of Buddhas come forth from his toes. That shout that comes forth from Guishan's feet do you feel its echoes down the ages? It's right here, right now. Thank you.